For two years, you guys have been commenting on how I need to do a cartridge review of a certain cartridge that is very popular in Europe that hits way above its weight for hunting. And so in today's video, we are going to review the 6.5 Crete, no, that's not it. 6.5 by 55 Swede. So why have I taken so long to review the beloved 6.5 millimeter Swede? Well, I think it's for a couple of reasons. Number one, I it's not that prevalent where I'm from. So I'm in North America and I just don't think Americans or Canadians really care about the 6.5 Swede. And the last reason is, well, based off of my channel name, I like really fast cartridges. And the 6.5 Swede is anything but fast, as you will see in a sec. With all that being said, let's find out why Europeans, and more specifically the Swedes, love this cartridge. The 6.5 Swede was officially adopted by the Swedish military in 1894. It is an extremely old cartridge. And the case dimensions are really similar to a 308 Winchester. However, the performance is a bit lacking, mostly due to the 6.5 Swede being in an older rifle like a Mauser 1896 with really low pressures. So you'll see this very apparent in the Hornady reloading manual, just how well slow it is because of the lower pressures. So a 130 grain, 2700 feet per second, not that quick. A 140 grain at 2650. So again, this thing is a little on the slow side. Now the 6.5 Swede, um, well, it's the definition of hitting well above its weight. I am reminded constantly that this is an incredible big game cartridge. I don't know if I fully agree with it. But the 6.5 Swede has taken a lot of European moose. And the bullet, I assume, they use is something like a 160 grain round nose bullet. So it's heavy for caliber, uh, really high sectional density at pretty slow velocities. This 160 grain at around 2300 feet per second really has me scratching my head. Let's be honest, this is abysmal performance. And it really makes me think that the 6.5 Swede hunters in Europe are really taking close shots at these European moose. And the other thing is they are really proving that bullet construction and bullet placement is king. Question is, how does it compare to some of the more modern 6.5 cartridges? Well, according to Hornady, it's lacking quite a bit. So let's just turn some pages. Hornady thinks the 260 Remington shoots faster, even though it has a smaller case. And of course, Hornady is going to always <clears throat> boost their homemade cartridges like the 6.5 Creedmoor. Um, and the Creedmoor has a much smaller case. Uh, and check out the velocities, apparently, according to Hornady, 2850. I'll believe that when I see it in a 22 inch barrel. And then, of course, there's more like 65284 Norma is more powerful, and there's a lot more powerful anyway. One thing I like about the Hornady manuals is the case drawing is actually the same size as the actual case. So let's compare it to the USA's Darling, the 6.5 Creedmoor, to see how it compares in size. And not surprising, the 6.5 Creedmoor is a bit smaller. So, how on earth is the 6.5 Swede? 200 feet per second slower than a 6.5 Creedmoor. The number one reason is, well, this cartridge is over 100 years old, and when you shoot them in old military rifles, the pressure is a lot lower than a modern cartridge. So a 6.5 Creedmoor can shoot 65,000 PSI, while the 6.5 Swede with military rifles, PSI is around 51,000. And the next reason is that Hornady really loves to inflate its numbers for its own cartridges. 
let me show you. So as I said a minute or so ago, the according to Hornady, the 6.5 Creedmoor is more powerful than a 260 Remington and a 6.5 Swede. And a max velocity with a 140 grain bullet is 2850. Hmm. Let's see what the other books say about this cartridge. Okay, here we are in the Nosler reloading manual with a 6.5 Creedmoor and 140 grain bullet. Top velocity is a little over 2700, so 2733. So well under 100 feet per second slower than what Hornady says you can get. And according to Nosler, the 6.5 Creedmoor is actually slower than the 260 Remington and the 6.5 Swede. Let's see what Nosler claims the velocities you can get. With a 140 grain bullet in the 6.5 Swede, you can get almost 2,800 feet per second. Now you are very much compressed, so I would say it's pretty obtainable to get 2,750, high 2,700s in the 6.5 Swede in a modern rifle. Now I understand most of you do not reload, so let's see how the 6.5 Swede does with factory ammo. And Nosler does make 6.5 Swede with 140 grain Accubond, so that's nice. And let's just go down to the velocity, 2,650. Here we are with Nosler 6.5 Creedmoor, 140 grain. Let's just scroll down, 2,650. So, at least with this one box, they're identical. Now if you look at other ammo, a lot of it's military stuff, so it's a little bit slower, but what you're gonna see is a 140 grain bullet going anywhere from 2550 to 2650 for the 6.5 Swede. I did see some Superformance from Hornady, and let's just look at with a 140 grain SST, 2735. Interesting. That's almost 100 feet per second faster than what Hornady says you can get in their reloading book. Lastly, let's go ahead and look at some Lapua ammo for the 6.5 Swede with a 155 grain mega bullet, according to them. And of course, it has the moose on the box. I kind of want to see what limitations it has with this 155 grain bullet. Let's look at the velocity. No surprise, much quicker than what Hornady says. So 155 grain at 2,559 feet per second. Before I show you the energy numbers for the 6.5 Swede, I completely understand foot-pounds is not the end-all be-all for killing power. It's just one way to see how powerful your cartridge is. And shot placement really is most important. So a 155 grain, your muzzle energy is 2,254 foot-pounds at 50 yards. You're now below 2,000 foot-pounds, 100 yards, 1756 foot pounds, 150, you're now down around 1500 foot pounds, and 200, you are below that 1500 foot pound mark. Now, I'm just going to take a wild guess that the ancestors for the Swedish moose hunters weren't taking shots that were probably past 200 yards. I'm sure some of them were, uh, but yeah, that kind of makes sense how. It could definitely kill moose. So I'm supposed to be deer hunting. I'm supposed to be up at camp right now with my 257 Weatherby, but as you can tell with my voice, I got sick. So I'm hoping to go deer hunting next week. Let's talk about something that I don't really talk about that often or ever is just how biased reloading manuals are. This is not just a Hornady thing. Uh, Nosler does it as well. Nosler likes to inflate its numbers for its cartridge just like Hornady does it for theirs. One thing though in common is they always downplay the Weatherby cartridges. I just want to give you an example. So a 180 grain bullet in the Hornady manual, a top velocity of just 3100 feet per second. Now you can get Weatherby ammo there's a 180 Accubond, and if you can look, it says 3250, so 150 feet per second faster. Now, I've loaded a 180 Accubond right here, 
and I've used H4831 because I have a lot of luck with it. And I was just using Hornady's data. And I decided to try 82 grains. And guess what velocity I got? It wasn't 3,050 feet per second. I was getting 3320. So getting almost up there to being 300 feet per second faster than what Hornady says you can get. Now, I do have a fast rifle, but there's just some examples of just kind of how the reloading books are a guide. They're not the Bible.